Now, in the previous video, we examined how we can multiply two vectors known as the dot product. In particular, we're interested in how one vector affects the other vector as long as we're dealing with them in the same direction. But there is another way of multiplying vectors, and it is different, and it's called the cross product. Now, in the cross product, what we have is one vector will have an effect on the other vector as long as there is a perpendicular component between the two vectors. In other words, the angle between the two vectors is not zero. And the greater that angle, the more are the effect. And the resultant vector is actually perpendicular to the plane of those two vectors. Now, there are a number of examples that we treat in high school. For example, there is the motor effect, where we have the current multiplied by the magnetic field multiplied by the length of the wire will give us the force that that wire experiences. And the direction is perpendicular to both the current and the magnetic field strength. Similarly speaking, when we have torque, we have a case of the moment or the radius, a force that is applied to it that is perpendicular to that radius, and the air direction of the torque ends up using the right-hand rule, gives us the, the vector direction that is perpendicular to the plane of both the radius and the force vectors. Now, in high school, we simply refer to the sine component. So in terms of the motor effect, the formula ends up being ILB sine theta. And similarly with torque, it ends up being force times the moment, which is the radius, multiplied by the sine of theta. And so if, for example, our two vectors are parallel to each other, the angle between them is zero. And of course, sine zero is zero, no effect at all. But if the angle between them is 90 degrees, sine 90 is one, and we have a maximum effect as a result. But again, if our vectors are in three-dimensional space, it becomes a little bit more problematic. And so therefore the unit vector notation is going to help us here. So in the cross product, the formula we write is A, and we write cross B, and it is equal to the magnitude of A multiplied the magnitude of B multiplied by the sine of the angle. And I'm going to use the symbol phi here. Now the direction is determined by what we refer to as the right hand rule. And so what you do with your right hand is you have your fingers curling in the direction that vector A goes to vector B, and then your thumb will point in the direction of the resultant vector. In this case, it's going to be upward. Now it's important to note, therefore, that means A times B is not going to be equal to B times A. In fact, A times B will end up being equaling the negative of B times A. See, I have these two vectors here, and if I actually continue the diagram across, you can see I form a parallelogram. Well, the area of that parallelogram is equal to the magnitude of vector A multiplied by the magnitude of vector B, multiplied by the sine of the angle between them. And as you can see, that ends up being the size of this red vector, which is the resultant vector of A cross B. You can see if I increase the angle, my vector increases. If I decrease the angle, the actual final resultant decreases. If I make it actually in the same direction, of course, I get zero. But as I continue that along, you can see now my direction of the vector goes in the opposite direction. In other words, I using my right hand rule, if I go from vector A to B using my fingers, I'm going to have my thumb pointing upward. And similarly, if I do it over the other side, you can see it's going to go downward. Of course, this is fairly straightforward, but of course, these two vectors are nicely placed on that plane. But of course, I can change this so they are actually in different planes. And so in this case, I've got two vectors, and I'll just move this one across like so, it's in completely a different plane. It's not sitting on any of the coordinate system planes. But you'd see, again, that the final vector is actually perpendicular to those other two vectors. Again, the area of the parallelogram, modulus A, modulus B, multiplied by the sine of the angle between them, ends up equaling the magnitude of the resultant vector that we have here. So how do we determine the vector of A cross B? So let's make it vector C is equal to A cross B. That means that the X component of C 
is equal to a y b z minus a z b y. You'll notice that I have x here and then y z and then reversed. Similarly, c y is equal to a x b z. Notice the x y z minus again reversed a z b x. And then C, Z, can you work out what's going to happen? Well, we're going to get A, X, B, Y minus A, Y, B, X. The question is, why is this? If you wait to the end of the video, I'll show you the proof of how we get there. Now, there is a simpler way to remember this, and that's putting all the things in what we refer to as a matrix form and determining what we call the determinant. And so what you do is this, you say, well, A cross B, and then what you do is you put in square brackets, you put your I hat, your J hat, and your K hat here, and then you put your two vectors in. Of course, we what we have is A X, A Y, and A Z, and then B X, B Y, and B Z. So the components are therefore determined by what they refer to as the determinant. And so what we have here is if you want the x component, in other words, the unit vector of i hat, what's remaining, you do a y b z minus a z b y. Similarly speaking, if we cover the j over, we do a x times b z minus a z b x. And then similarly for k, we do a x a y minus a y b x. Again, the same thing. Now, again, the angle is not so much an issue anymore because the angle now is going to be 90 degrees to both A and B. So let's complete our discussion by using an example. And I'll use the same example that I did in my dot product video. So I have two vectors, A and B. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to do A cross B and then B cross A and show you that although they will end up being the same magnitude, they will actually have different directions. And I'm going to use the matrix form. Using this form, let's multiply this out. Now, remembering that we cover over the I and we end up using the terms that are in the columns that are left over, what we end up getting is, and so that will give us now to work out the actual magnitude of this vector. And that will equal. So now let's do B cross A. And that will give us You can see that, that the absolute value of each of the components is exactly the same. So the magnitude is going to be 4 root 6. But you'll, you'll see that the x, the y, and the z components are in the opposite direction. So let me end by showing how to derive that expression for the three components of our a cross b. So we write. We now multiply every single term by the other terms. Now, we have a lot of terms, but we can automatically remove some of the terms. Do you know why? Well, if both of the vectors are in the same direction, in other words, they're both i vectors, then the angle between them is zero. And so automatically the sign of zero ends up, of course, being zero. So we can cancel any of those out. So that's this one, this one, and this one. But I'm now going to rewrite this, but not exactly as it is. I'm going to put the components together and the unit vectors together. The thing to remember there is, is if I have i and j vectors going from one to the other, then i times j happens to be k. So what I now have is this vector is a x b y and then what I have is the k vector because using your, we're using your right hand rule, you can actually notice that i to k gives us a vector k. Over here, I have 
x, z, but i to vector k actually ends up being negative j. So I get plus negative a, x, b, z, and then vector j. Similarly speaking, when I go from j to i, I'm going to get negative k. Now j to k gives me vector i positive, k to i gives me j positive, and the last one from k to j will give me a negative i. And now all we need to do is group the i's, j's, and k together, and we get... And there we have it. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and put a comment down below if this is helpful for you. My name is Paul from Physics High. Bye for now.